Okay, so I'm going to do a quick like picture here where I show the difference. So we've got the ELF header and then we've got the array of uh, program headers or segment headers. You can call them either. So we've got this array of program headers and what are the offsets? What are the file sizes? Where would it map in the file? So the P header thing is literally just mapping over its own table. It starts at 40, which is right after the ELF header, and then it has file size going over this. P interp is at 238, and this is not, you know, to scale, obviously, but wait, is it? Actually, that is to scale right there. Anyways, then you've got the P interp after these program headers. It's just a string saying this is the thing that has to be loaded before my program. And then we've got the PT load. So as I said, load is the only thing that says take this chunk of the file and move it into memory. So those other two things are obviously well within that load segment, so they will still make their way into memory. But, um, but the PT load will have its permissions, which will be applied to this big chunk of memory. All right? So here's that sort of gap I was showing, right? Here's the first load segment, here's the second one. There's some weird no man's land between 6DC and E18, where there's stuff in the file that's not actually going to be uh, mapped into memory. And then down here with this last one, we've got, you know, file size of 208, mem size of 218. So what does that mean? We've got a BSS kind of information going on. Then we've got dynamic, which you can see is well within that last load segment. We've got uh, note, which is in that first load segment. The new E frame stack is zero size. And can you reload? So that's how the things are overall. So I don't want to talk about this. All right. I'm going to give you a five minute break and then we're going to kind of talk about there's a little interesting thing with the ELF load segments where I'll basically be proving to you that although, for instance, we've got this second load segment, right? And I say it starts at E18 and it ends at 1020. Like that's all the file data that should be moved from file to memory, right? What I will justify for you in the next section is showing the OS loader is much more, I don't want to say lazy, but I want to say mm, coarse grained. And so the OS loader grabs like chunks of hex 1000 out of the file. So even though this is, you know, not hex 1000 worth of data, it just grabs chunks of hex 1000 aligned chunks of the file and just plops that into memory. So all of that no man's land stuff will end up in memory and all of a bunch of stuff after this from 1020 in file all the way to hex 2000 in file or wherever the file ends, a bunch of extra superfluous data is going to get mapped into memory by the, uh, by the OS loader just because it grabs big fat hex 1000 chunks of file and flops them into memory. So. I'll let you take five, and then we'll come back, justify that with the debugger, and move on to the section editor. If we left off, Zeno was telling you that the ELF, or the uh, Linux OS loader, was being a bit too uh, loose with its interpretation of the program headers or the segments. He was saying, just because it says that a particular segment only goes from, uh, let's say, E18 to 1020, doesn't mean that's the only file data that's actually going to be mapped into memory. So now to justify this, I'm going to show, so, so my argument will be basically that the OS loader will grab stuff in hex 1000 chunk file size, hex 1000 byte file size chunks. So first of all, what that would mean is when it first maps this segment into memory, it's going to go from zero to hex 1000 and it's going to map everything into memory at 400,000, wherever it happens to map it, right? All right, and so to prove that, right, I can pick something that's file data outside of this thing's memory space, and I can show that that's getting mapped into memory, right? So I'm going to pick hex six or 700 as something that's greater than 60C but less than E1A. So hex 700 will be our magic file data place where there's going to be something mapped into memory. So to show this, I'm going to use the debugger and yeah, okay. First I argue it in, uh, first I argue it in slide form, then I'll argue it in debugger form. All right, so here's what I'm saying. 
basically the OS loader is going to grab hex 1000 bytes at a time. So whereas this really says 60C, I'm saying that it's actually going to grab all the way to hex 1000. And so we've got extra data from between 60C and 1000 that's getting mapped from file into memory, even though it has no relevance, no program should touch it, and so forth. All right, so that's what's going to actually get mapped to the memory. So that's the file data. This is the memory data because this is the 400,000 where it's actually going to be mapped into memory. So Xenos, believe it or not, um, I'm going to show that you know this data is actually going to be mapped into memory, and I'm actually not going to use 6DC. I'm going to use hex 700 in this class just because it's a big round number and easier. So if I look at the data at, we'll just say 700 now. And so 700 should obviously be mapped to 400,700. 400, All right, so I want to show you the file data and then I'll say like that file data is definitely going to be mapped into memory at that virtual address. All right. So I can do that with hex dump dash c. Right, let me get the command hex dump dash c dash s dash n for eight bytes. Wait, skip. S is skip zero x seven hundred bytes into the file. Dump the number of bytes is eight, and the file is hello. All right. So I'm going to show you that zeros in file. I've been mapped to zeros in memory. That's not a particular convincing uh, example, right? So don't you hate zeros? Unacceptable. So I'm going to show that really the data, the exact data that I'm saying on disk is getting mapped into memory. So I'm going to change that 700 to A's and B's. All right. So what's this supposed to be like? The memory already had data sitting in it, and it was kind of used to the memory. It's more like you know, if I go show you the memory and there's zeros there, that's not a good proof that like those zeros were the zeros from file, right? It yeah. could just be any other zeros. So I want to show you very specifically. I'm going to put data there at the 700, and that was definitely the data from file. And now uh, I'll prove that it's the data that gets into memory. That'll show that it's reading too much data from that first segment and mapping it into memory. All right, so hex edit, hello. Go to offset 700. Put in 414141, 4, 4, 42, 42, 42, 42. So A's and B's into the file. Save the file. Hello. So I'm just overwriting this data that I claim is more like padding data. It's not legitimate data that's used by anybody because it's never mapped into memory. It's not covered by any program segment. I suppose it could be used by a segment section rather, but okay. So you can use GDB, the GNU debugger, to run this program. Hello. I am going to put a break on main and I am going to run it. Alright, so started the program, put a breakpoint on main, it just starts at the very uh, stops at the very beginning. And now what I want to see is that 400,700 is going to have my 414141. So I'm going to do uh, x slash 8 characters. So I'm going to interpret the memory. I'm going to examine memory, 8 characters starting at 400,700. And there we go. AAA BBB. Unfortunately, I think that's octal. That's the octal. Uh, you pull one, but yeah, um, I can do it in just hex bytes to right, pull one, four, one, four, one, four, two, four, two, four, two. So hex 700 data from file has been mapped into memory at the expected virtual memory address, even though no one ever asked for it to be mapped into memory there. So the program, the OS loader is grabbing these big chunks where it's rounding sizes down and rounding sizes up to the nearest hex 1000. So it started at zero, so when it rounds that down, that's still zero. And when it rounds it up, it's 1000. So the same sort of thing will happen on the, yeah. 
<clears throat> so you four, throw four ones and four twos at the problem. It's the same thing will happen here. So, uh, yes. So what I'm going to claim here is that it starts at e18, and it's going to round the start address down to the nearest hex 1000 aligned thing. So the nearest hex 1000 aligned thing that's smaller than e18 is just zero. So it's aligned in the sense that you know, it doesn't have the, any of the least significant bits set. So that goes down to zero, and it's going to round up at the end address. So 1020 rounded up is 2000. So the file data that it's actually going to grab is from 0 to 2,000. So some of that data right there is, you know, going to have been overwritten by the first segment. So they won't, col well, actually, sorry. Some of that data will be, so all of this data will actually be mapped in. The reason it doesn't smash the other program load thing is that this segment gets loaded at 600,000, not 400,000. So the first one loaded at 400,000, second one loads at 600,000. So even though it rounds down and like grabs all that extra data, it's not like smashing the previous segment or anything like that. And so we've got all this extra data that's mapped in. So really, all of the code and everything else from the beginning of the file happens to be at 400,000, and it also happens to be somewhere around 600,000. So this is just sort of a, in some sense, this is, the only reason I put this in here is because I had to deal with this when I was dealing with packers and things like that, but yeah. First question. Uh, that, so, so that second load, saying around it down to e one eight, it's actually going to stat at a thousand, but hex thousand. But I'll get my full. It says the size is hex two hundred eight. So that full, yep. that full size will be at right. on that that's why. Yep. So basically, the the real data is still going to be mapped at the right location, and that's part of why it does this round down as well. So it rounds down the file data. And the reason why in the headers it says the virtual address of the data starting at E18 in the file is 600 E18. Yeah. The reason that works out is because they round down the read in and then they just slap that thing at 600,000 and then it ultimately, you know, if you start at zero and you move to e E18, it would have just basically mapped up perfectly so that uh, they could have absolutely said, like, I'm going to force this thing to be mapped at 600,000 so that it would have started with the data from E18 and moved it to 61,000, or 600 E18, no, sorry, 600,000. They could have changed this around any way they wanted, basically, but in order to make it simple and easy for the OS loader to deal with, uh, because the compiler knew that the OS loader is doing this thing where it's rounding stuff down, it chose the start address for this segment to be 600E18 instead of just, say, 600,000 because it knew that the OS loader would be reading the file data starting from zero because it rounded down the E18 to zero, and then it would just slap stuff in, and so the real data would still end up at 600E18, the real data that they really wanted mapped. It's basically that's all extra data, that's all extra data. This small little section right here is the real thing according to the program headers, right? That's the real data it's trying to map, but because of this rounding that happens on either side, it overmaps stuff from the file. But this real data still gets where it needs to go. So real data still ends up exactly there. But yes. So the extra data that gets created at compile time, is it where I mean where does it come from? Is it does it get zeroed out or is it so that's a good question, and I'm not sure. So there's there's two different kinds of extra data, right? There's extra data that's just mapped up the, the rounded stuff on either side, and there's extra data which is more like the difference between these two segments, right? There's a hole between those two, and the question is, what is that stuff that's actually in here, right? I'm going to guess that that's section information. So those are particular sections which... Uh, are probably optional and probably don't necessarily need to be in there. Like it probably could have gotten away with taking this and like slapping it right after uh, this. But I think based on the compiler options, it's probably just having extra information that's coming in from the linker and just merging it into the file and it's putting it there. It's information that doesn't need to be mapped into memory necessarily. Think of, for instance, the relocations back in the PE files. Relocation information it gets used when the thing gets loaded up if there's any sort of movement in memory, but then it gets thrown away and maps back out of memory. 
So you could do the same sort of thing here with like not even mapping into memory. You could put all that relocation information right there in this gap. The OS loader could just read that information, use it, and then throw it away. So basically, the short answer is I don't know. I haven't investigated what's in there. I just took this hello world and compiled it and made pictures for it. But I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is all going to be section information from the linking stages which is going to be kind of optional. It's not used at runtime. It's not executable information. But it was stuff that just got basically merged in uh, by virtue of it was used at linking time and it's optional and can be added just because. You would hope that it's not just data that's on the disk. No, I, I, wouldn't, I absolutely it's wouldn't expect it to be just plain data on the disk. No, I, I expect it to be. That was my question. Is if there are any security implications? <laughs> You're right, potentially some kind of malicious data so I would say the biggest security sort of implication from this is that people who don't realize this is happening, that's, like I said, part of the reason I put this in here. We've got this gap right here, and if you just, like, don't realize that the loader does this rounding down and rounding up, as far as you're concerned, there's nothing important in that hole, right? The attacker can put code in there, and when you're looking at the file, you're just saying, like, okay, there's the code, and there's this other code. That's what i got to focus on, right? And there could be other code that's in here, and it does get mapped into memory, and it can be used at runtime. They just got to jump into that gap where that stuff happened to be getting mapped, right? And so they can jump in there and play around as much as they want in there. And it's just when you're looking at the file post facto, you're looking at doing forensic analysis, you're doing you know, static analysis, if you're not recognizing that that stuff is going to get put into memory and that stuff is available for runtime code, then you're potentially missing stuff. And you can also play games with the loader things where you can overlap segments and stuff like that. So you can smash one segment with the other segment, reading different data from the file and things like that. So, so that's the main security relevant reason why I really thought it's still important to understand that there's this round up and round down going on. Because when we get to the packers, we're dealing with people who are explicitly manipulating header information so that they can, you know, map stuff wherever they want. And if they want, they can overlap stuff if it's to their benefit. It just all depends what exactly they're trying to do. Are there any other questions? Alrighty. So, good. I think we're still on track. We should be good. Okay, so that was proof that there's this overmapping going on where it rounds down and it rounds up on what it reads from the file. And so this is basically what I expect to see in memory. There's this stuff, which it really wanted to map in, and then there's this overread stuff. And there's this stuff, which you really wanted to map in, and then there's this overread stuff. And you can see that the overread stuff includes the ELF headers, and this includes the ELF headers. It's just, this is the real stuff that gets used, and this is the real stuff that gets used. And so people can play games with that uh, all day long. And the key thing is one segment is mapped at 400,000, the other segment is mapped at 600,000. You know, it's all just based on this PT load information, right? Where's the virtual address? 400,000, where's the virtual address? 600 E18, but there's still some actual file data that started at 600,000 straight up. All right, so that's the ultimate thing. And then, just to be clear, remember this thing had file size 208, mem size 218, so there's an extra BSS stuff that got allocated that's not from disk. So it's all valid, it's just this top stuff is from disk, that's from disk, and this little sliver right there is just ESS stuff. And that's how the overall different segments uh, got put somewhere in here, just by virtue of the fact that their whole file chunk got mapped into memory somewhere. So I need like an old school Apple logo that I can like place on top of that. Just a, <laughs> but I need one with a transparent background kind of thing. 